Welcome to CLJ Notes channel. Here, we upload educational PowerPoint video clips on criminal law and jurisprudence and related laws for our criminology students. This time, let us look at the continuation of crimes against persons provided in Article 246 to 266-A to D of the Revised Penal Code focusing on rape as provided in the lat latter provision that is Article 266A to D as amended by Republic Act 8353. Now, our waiver. What are the crimes against persons? As we look back, we have parricide, murder, homicide, death caused in a tumultuous affray, physical injuries inflicted in tumultuous affray, giving assistance to suicide, discharge of firearms, infanticide, abortion, duel, challenging to a duel, mutilation, physical injuries, and rape. Take note, death or physical injuries inflicted under exceptional circumstances in Article 247 grants a privilege or benefit to the accused. It is not a felony and it does not punish such as a felony. Now let's focus on Republic Act 8353 amending Articles 266 of the revised penal code providing for the definition and other important notes on rape. When did the anti-rape law of 1997 take effect? Republic Act 8353, which is the anti-rape law of 1997, became effective on October 22, 1997. The penalty for rape in its unqualified form per Republic Act 7659 remains the same. The date is important in case of sexual assault by means of finger prior thereto the crime is acts of lasciviousness. From then on, it is rape. What is the effect of the reclassification of rape into a crime against persons from crimes against chastity? One. The procedural requirement of the offended party to file the case is no longer needed. This is now a public crime, unlike when it was a crime against chastity. Thus, the case can now be filed by the state motto proprio or on its own. Number two, the impossible crime of rape can now be committed. Number three, rape can now be committed against males since it is no longer a crime against chastity where the victims are females only except in acts of lasciviousness number four the aggravating circumstance relevant to crimes against persons shall apply indeed in the case of seal it is considered ignominy or moral suffering as aggravating How did RA-8353 revolutionize and expand the crime of rape? RA-8353 revolutionized the concept of rape in that it should include sexual violence on the woman's sex-related orifices other than her organ and expanded to cover gender-free rape. The transformation consisted of reclassification of rape as a crime against persons and the introduction of rape by sexual assault otherwise called instrument or object rape, also gender-free rape, or the narrower homosexual rape, as differentiated from the traditional rape through carnal knowledge or rape through sexual intercourse or penile rape. What are the differences between the two modes of rape? In traditional rape, the offender is always a man. The offended party is always a woman. Rape is committed through penile penetration of the vagina. The penalty is higher than sexual assault. In rape by sexual assault, the offender may be a man or a woman. The offended party may be a man or woman. 
Rape is committed by inserting the penis into another person's mouth or anal orifice or any instrument or object into the genital or anal orifice of another person. The penalty is lower than in traditional rape. Should object include finger in the commission of rape? Yes, object should include finger. Inserting a finger into the genitals or anus of a woman or even of a man is rape as the purpose of the new law is to expand the definition of the crime. To exclude from the definition the insertion of a finger or fingers into the genital or anal orifice of the victim whereas insertion of a bottle, a ball pen, or even a toothpick is included would be in unintelligible, arbitrary, and capricious delimitation of the law seeks to expand. What is the effect of error in the allegation of the mode of rape in the information? In view of the material differences between the two modes of rape, the first is not necessarily included in the second, and vice versa. Thus, if the charge in the information is rape through carnal knowledge, accused cannot be found guilty of rape by sexual assault without violating his right to be informed of the nature and cause of the accusation against him. How is rape committed and by whom? Rape is committed by a man who shall have carnal knowledge of a woman under any of the following circumstances. A. Through force, threat, or intimidation. B. When the offended party is deprived of reason or otherwise unconscious. C. By means of fraudulent machination or grave abuse of authority. And D. When the offended is under 12 or is demented even though none of the said circumstances are present. Rape is also committed by any person, man or woman, who under any of the stated circumstances shall commit an act of sexual assault by inserting his penis, man, into another person's, man or woman, mouth or anal orifice, or any instrument or object into the genital or anal orifice of another person, man or woman. May a woman be guilty of rape against another woman? Yes, either by conspiracy with a man or by committing the act herself in view of the expansion of rape to include gender-free rape or sexual assault. What consummates the crime of rape? The mere introduction of the penis into the labia majora, majora, or majora of the victim's genitalia engenders the crime of rape. Hence, it is the touching or entry of the penis into the labia majora or the labia minor of the pedendum of the victim's genitalia that consummates rape. What is the meaning of slightest penetration that could consummate the crime of rape? Complete penetration is not necessary to convict for consummated rape since the slightest penetration will suffice. Mere epidermal contact between the penis and the external layer of the vagina, the stroking and the grazing of the male organ upon the female organ or the mons pubis, categorizes the crime as attempted rape or acts of lasciviousness. There must be positive proof of even the slightest penetration, the touching of the labias by the penis, before rape could be deemed consummated. When is rape attempted? For attempted rape, the accused must have commenced the act of penetrating his sexual organ to that of the victim, but some cause or accident other than his own spontaneous desistance, the, the penetration, however slight, is not completed. Distinguish attempt attempted rape from acts of lasciviousness and just fixation. The difference is the intent shown by the offender's external acts. When the touching of the vagina by the penis of the accused is with intent to penetrate, attempted rape is committed. If there is no intent to penetrate, it is acts of lasciviousness. Under what circumstances will rape absorb forcible abduction? Rape absorbs forcible abduction where the accused intended at the very outset to rape the victim when he had abducted her. When is, multiple rape, when is multiple rapes committed at about the same time and place? Or when multiple rapes are committed at about the same time and place, is the principle of delito continuado applicable? 
No, each and every charge of rape is a separate and distinct crime. Each of the rapes should be proven beyond reasonable doubt. The prosecution is required to establish by necessary quantum of proof the elements of rape for each charge. A mental retardate is classified as a person deprived of reason. If the rapist is merely a relation, how should such fact be alleged in the information? If the offender is merely a relation other than a parent, ascendant, step-parent, or guardian, or common-law spouses of the mother of the victim, the allegation in the information must be that he is a relative by consanguinity or affinity within the third civil degree. When relationships will not amount to qualified rape, or what relationships will not amount to qualified rape? A stepbrother or stepsister relationship cannot elevate the crime to qualified rape, for they are not related by blood or affinity. Is incestuous ra in incestuous rape, is force or intimidation indispensable? No. Even assuming that force and intimidation had not actually been employed, rape was nevertheless committed. The absence or of violence or offer of resistance would not be significant because of the overpowering and overbearing moral influence of the father over the daughter which takes place of violence and offer of resistance required in rape cases committed by an accused having no relationship with the victim. What guiding principles must be considered in reviewing rape cases? Rape is essentially an offense of secrecy, not generally attempted except in dark or deserted or and secluded places, away from prying eyes. The crime usually commences solely upon the word of the offended, and conviction invariably turns upon her credibility as the single witness of the actual occurrence. What guiding principles must be considered in reviewing rape cases? Considering the severity of the penalty, courts should take extreme care in weighing the evidence to avoid doing injustice to the accused. Thus, the three guiding principles in reviewing rape cases, namely, 1. An accusation for rape can be made with facility. It is difficult to prove but more difficult for the accused, though innocent, to disprove. Number two, in view of the intrinsic nature of the crime where only two persons are usually involved, the testimony of the complainant must be scrutinized with extreme caution. And three, the evidence for the prosecution must stand or fall on its own merits and cannot be allowed to draw strength from the weakness of the evidence for the defense. What facts do not constitute elements of rape? One, resistance. Two, virginity. 3. Absence of fresh laceration in the hymen. 4. The absence of findings by medical legal does not disprove the commission of rape. 5. The accused being younger than the victim is not relevant in rape. 6. Pain. What are the elements of statutory rape? Two elements must be established that the accused had carnal knowledge of a woman and that the woman is below 12 years of age. The sweetheart defense cannot be sustained in statutory rape, where what is material is not the victim's consent, but the fact that the victim was below 12 years old when it happened. What is the necessary or what is necessary for an effective pardon by the offended party? The valid marriage between the parties shall extinguish the action or the penalty imposed. Forgiveness by the wife as the offended victim shall extinguish the action or the penalty imposed, unless the marriage is void of an issue. What are the presumptions added by the new law? Number one, any physical overt act manifesting resistance against the act of rape in any degree from the offended party. Number two, where the offended party is so situated as to render him or her incapable of giving valid consent. If you have any additional input, question, or comment regarding Republic Act 8353 amending the revised penal code provisions, please put that in the comment section. If you are not yet subscribed to this channel, subscribe by clicking the subscribe button and switch on the notification bell. Share our video with other criminology students as well. Thank you.